And this is what we're going to be casting. Trap versus Zest. <clears throat> In the top left. Let me change this over. Whoop. It is the pink Protoss Zest. In the bottom right says the red Protoss. It is Trap. Neural Parasite is the better way to own libs. You own them temporarily to your side. Oh, that sounds right. God, I gotta tell you, like, reading... Sometimes reading Reddit, you really do get the impression that it's, a, like, a hive mind, right? That it's just, like... You realize that you're reading things that confirm your own viewpoint. And, uh, then things happen in real life, and you realize, oh... Right, it's definitely not actually truly representative of the whole of the world or the whole of the United States. And you gotta deal with that, you know. It's a good thing to learn. And then sometimes you read, like, Reddit or any forums. Talk about, like, actual important stuff. Like, politics. And you're just like, oh my god. Oh, there are truly horrible people out there in the world. Like, oh my god. Like any time, I'm I'm gonna say it, guys. I'm gonna like unsurprisingly, I'm I'm li I'm a liberal. Big surprise, am I right? Whenever like our conservative pops up on my Reddit feed, because I don't log into Reddit, I just like read whatever is on top or whatever. Whenever it pops up, I actually just um I just I actually just go what? I just at first I'm just like oh is this a troll post, and then I realize it's an actual post, and I'm like oh my god. And they actually say things. Like they're owning them libs. They actually say it. Anyways, this is going to turn into politics, and I apologize in advance, but okay, there it is. <clears throat> Alright then. <sighs> Alright, politics. Out of my game, am I right? Who wants politics in my game? What are we going to start doing? Make a game that's all about environmental terrorists that try and better the world from greedy corporations that use the world and all its resources to better their own individual wealth. We're gonna, we're gonna play a game like that? No thank you. And that's right, Final Fantasy VII is a terrible game. Glad everyone realized it. Anyways, <clears throat> PvP starts off really fast, you guys, and there were two proxy pylons. They both were not used. They both are trying to trick each other. But who got tricked more is always the question, isn't it? The probe will not see the pylon of Zest, just kidding. But they, uh, what, they both go into double stalkers? No. Zach actually went double adept. So double stalkers, typically what you do against someone who is going to proxy you, you just kind of gotta. And then you can follow up with even double sentry. In this case, Trap had three stalkers in a sentry, but no more sentry. The adepts are allowed into the main base. Get a sentry, get a probe. Almost got two. Wait, what? What happened? Oh, the probe scout died. <laughs> And uh, Zest comes out a little bit better. Literally the tiniest little bit better because he has one more probe. But his Nexus is later too, so I don't actually know if it's better. He loses the two Adepts though, so his army supply was, was dragging there a little bit. But he got a Sentry. So he takes away the Lucent Phoenix, which gives him more control over the next stage of the game. Now, can he do a lot with that? Maybe not. You know, if this was actually like a, a three gate, then it's maybe a bigger deal. But... It still is some control for Zest, as Trap is in the dark. Not for long. Lucent Phoenix will pop up again and again. Nothing about to attack in a trap. So even if you were to lose Lucent Phoenix, it's not one of those things that's like, oh, no, he doesn't have a force field. No, he can use it. But he's getting two shield batteries because he has no idea what's about to hit him. He did not even scout the Nexus. That probe died, I guess, before the Nexus was put down or before it saw the Nexus. <clears throat> It's, it's PvP, you guys. The lack of information is information, and information is not real information. Okay? <clears throat> and who doesn't like Zest? That's a question I ask myself. But again, going back to reading forums, sometimes reading other people's opinions will make you want to gouge your eyes out. Some people don't like Zest. 
And now we're in that part of the PvP where they both realize they actually both wanted to macro. So they're both just going to continue scouting each other and macroing and trying to cut corners where possible. Whereas before, they really couldn't because they didn't know what was happening. Um, they could go for the sentries, and they absolutely will. What sentry? Did it even exist? Question mark? Those sentries also die, unfortunately. Four adepts apparently one-shot it. Show that it even get a chance to help. And uh, the warp prism that Zest quickly chrono boosted into during that phase where Trap had no scouting does some pretty significant damage. You have to replace at least one sentry just to have Guardian Shield for future battles. You kind of have to. And one sentry, 100 gas, hello, that's pretty expensive. <clears throat> hey, Borsty. Yeah, you missed the classic PVT, Borsty. You would have been so proud. What prism goes in, Terran taps out. All right, so we got Chrono. Well, eventually Chronos. We got plus one charge on the way. Zest. Chronoing. There we go. There's a good boy. There's a good boy. He's a good PvPer. He's a good PvPer. Uh, plus one is being Chronoed out alongside charge. Charge can kind of be a bit... I mean, it's a very important upgrade. Don't get me wrong. But it's maybe always been that upgrade, even before it was changed, even before the damage was taken away. It's always been that upgrade that either you're using to do an all-in, if you're really chronoing it out, you know, very quickly, or it can kind of be delayed. If you're going to have a 30-second difference of charge or plus one, which one do you choose? Right? Kind of like roach speed and plus one, I guess. Depending on the game, one can be more important than the other, but generally, I would like that upgrade more than the charge. Generally, not always. Anywho, he's a bit later to the charge. He's faster than the plus one. They both are in Templar Archives, such as the things of PvP. But Zest has a much faster third base, which means that Trap's got to start applying pressure, probably while getting his own third base, because PvP. But he should be applying pressure. His third base comes down, but he's down six workers. He's down basically 90% of a Nexus. And while the Adepts don't get much else <clears throat> done, they grab three sentries. I mean, that's pretty damn good. And oh, these are Adepts. These are Archons. Archon drop is pretty much the best type of drop you can get. But that is a very good recall out because he was about to be surrounded by the Stalkers. So seven probes in total go down. Not too shabby. And all you use is a recall. That's an easy choice to make. But Trap has similar ideas here. And oh, man, the probes. No, stop, 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 stop. Good lord. I don't... <laughs> he almost lost another 10 probes by pulling them through the damn Archons. <clears throat> I'm not biased, guys. I'm not cheering for any particular player. Plus two is on the way for Trap. His third base is about to finish, but he has an excellent position right now to try and engage. He did pull Zest's army entirely away, but Zest has responded now. He's also responding to the drop in the main with his own drop. Drops on drops on drops on drops. Whose army is better on the front lines? Initially, it looked like Zest might be, but Traps actually powers through. More Archons are on the way. Shield battery is depleted of energy very, very quickly. There is no Warprism here for either party, but obviously that's a bit worse for Trap, who is away from his proxy pylons. <clears throat> but the... Oh, what? 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 Wait, what happened? The Archon drop in the main dealt the... Took out the Archon drop in the main from Zest. Zest's Archon drop in his own main died to traps. Well, that was not supposed to happen. So somehow the Warp Prism of Trap gets two Archons deposited, as well as like seven Zealots in the main base. That also means that Zest lost two Archons then? Oh, man. I missed that. I mean, Zest still keeps the probe lead here. Still up by seven is really quite good. But he has fallen significantly behind in that upgrade. And he has only repowered that forge. Loses another five probes where the Archons take their final breath. And Trap is starting to make strides in the comeback game. But not quite there, unfortunately. If the game heart was on, yes! It was on. Uh, Zest has already taken such a supreme lead. I mean, this spike is considerable. 1,300... Resources? I was going to say minerals, but I think it's just overall resources. That's that's going to push you ahead for a little bit. But that plus two might be even more important than a couple of extra zealots or an extra immortal. 
Especially if Trap takes a superior concave. Zest now adds on his additional gases. Archons are usually the name of the game, but... Ooh, looks like the Temple Archives died. I missed it. And apparently so did Zest. It's only just now finishing as he pushes forward, realizes he can't actually push. Retreats, he needs to start making Archons as soon as possible. That's exactly what he does. We can only make so many. One more coming into the field. Which player has a, a war prism at this point? Well, they both do. Wait. What is that? Oh, it was probably just rallied with the observer. I was like, is that the, is that the original one? It never died? No, it, it did die. Um, I mention it because it's good for juggling. It is fantastic for juggling. And Zest is going to need a lot to cover this plus two deficit he's in. The armor supplies are quite similar. The army types are pretty similar too, but two immortals for trap. Sometimes immortals look useless. If they get concaved on by a bunch of zealots, they're not that great. But if they're allowed to fire from the back lines of a fight, they add a ton of extra damage. So I actually like those two immortals better in this situation as opposed to five extra zealots. Oh, and Trap is setting up quite the concave. He's also still hitting his plus two timing. Plus two is so close to done for Zest, but he's forced to engage before he gets concaved upon. Shield batteries are plenty off to the right side, charging up a lot of these zealots, but the zealots for Zest are getting thinned out very quickly. He's starting to juggle the Archons here, and he does still have the supply lead. The Archons also getting on top of the Immortals, and the Immortals are to look really useless against the Zealots, but more juggling happening on either side. Shield Battery still trying their best to help out. Zest still has the supply lead overall, but it's so many in workers. But the Concave of Archons, look at them. Look how slow so many of those Archons are. Are actually going to work out? No. No, it's Trap. So many of the Archons are also almost dead. Two Immortals almost dead, but not actually dead. He should be down five more units if it wasn't for the juggling here. But Defender's Advantage can still kick in. I mean, hell, even 10 probes being sacrificed for the greater good might still actually be good enough. Plus two is also finalized here for Zest, so the upgrades are back to being even. Now he's getting the Superior Concave, and all those units for Trap that he was juggling earlier on are so easily basically one-shotted because they're so damn low that the juggling is no longer working for him. And that was a damn close battle, but it ends up in Zest's favor. And not only that, he has 13 more workers. He's going to have an upgrade lead as he immediately starts plus one shields. Very cheeky immortals, man. This is so dangerous. They don't even have their shields. Then he actually messes it up. He messes it up and almost loses the war prism as well. Oh, that was so dangerous for him to do just for a couple of stalkers. These guys are pretty good at their micro. They're pretty cool. But Zest should absolutely have this game. A Dark Shrine is on the way, and that could absolutely change things up. At this level, it is not very easy to just simply afford cannons and every single mineral line. I mean, it's absolutely what I will do, because I'm banking a thousand minerals anyways. But for them, it's a little bit more difficult. But it looks like Zest, I mean, he's had the economy lead for so long. I mean, check that out. That absolutely afford 450 minerals to protect yourself against CTs. You know it's getting later into a PvP, and you know that you have taken a lead there with that defense. So what's the only option left over? Generally DTs. Sometimes disruptors. True, but that would take a long time for Trap to get into. He'd have to wait for Robotics Bay, and he'd also want a second Robo, uh, helping to uh, actually get a high disruptor count too. Not just one or two, it's gonna necessarily make or break the game. But no, it's, it's DTs. Zest has protected himself against it, but DTs plus Archons, that's a different story. He also now has access to a different type of Archon, one that's more expensive on the minerals than it is the gas. But that plus one shield is finished, and Zest is setting up for quite an attack. So many Zealots off to the right side, and the rest of his army off to the left, still looking quite powerful. Thank you very much to JD Elios for the Twitch Prime sub. Zest is looking to end this game here. He's got a 40 army supply lead. Zealot's coming from the right side. Not getting the biggest concave he was probably imagining, but still so much Zest, so little trap. Especially since two Archons are on this side of the map trying to do their damage, trying to force Zest to pull back, but that's not going to happen. It does look like Zest is missing an Observer, something that Trap has noticed, so a couple of DTs doing more damage than they really should have. They do get hit by the Archon Splash, even if you don't have Detection, but they were lucky enough not to get hit by them, it looks like. Nexus goes down, DTs live, but 24 probes also died. The Archon drop on the main also isn't doing as much damage, I think, as Trap was hoping for. Zest needs to get some detection on the front line, however, and on the defensive. This cannon 
is providing it for his mineral line, but there you go, an observer here. He's getting all types of chaos. See, there's two war prisms? I didn't even notice. This had two war prisms. He's gonna come back to clean us up. One prism goes down. They both had two war prisms? When the hell did that happen? Why is so much of this game about war prisms? Oh, that was kind of silly. But Zest does end up taking game number one, proving that he is still best. <clears throat> aye, aye, aye. Both of them pretty good at PvP, though. I would give them a solid A. But only one of them deserves the A+. And that's whoever wins the series. In the top right, as the red Protoss, he is Trap. In the bottom left, that is the blue Protoss, it is Zest. And we're on Eternal Empire, so Trap's map choice. This was the semifinals of an Alima League. So if you want to get access to these replays, guess what? You can for a moderate monthly fee. Go to patreon.com slash olimoli to check out all the options they have to support this awesome tournament. And then otherwise, you can find this tournament on twitch.tv slash Maynard every Tuesday morning or night, depending on your time zone, I guess. But who lives in Australia? No one. No one. So just consider it Tuesday morning. And then whatever you, Europeans are actually awake at this hour are like, what about us? And I'm like, you don't matter. You are literally not allowed in my country. Get the hell out of here. Isn't that fun, guys? Isn't it fun? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it fun? <clears throat> Coronavirus stuff. <clears throat> I'm, I'm obviously kidding. It's not fun. Also, I'm still confused. Was, was old Trumpy boy confused as well? Are Europeans actually banned from America or not? <laughs> I heard some conflicting reports. And also, can they just go through the UK and then into America and still be fine? I haven't gotten an answer on that one either. Hey, my little mouse is back. Yay. Zest is actually planning on using his proxy pylon. If we remember last game, they did not. They both did it, and then they both responded as they did in traps case i think he took it seriously in zest case he took a chance and went for a depth instead in this case he takes a chance again and it's going to fail miserably because trap actually scouts the unfortunate thing about pvp is that you can't just depend on scouting sometimes they are doing something and you just don't go to the right place at the right time in this case he goes to the exact right place sees that it is a proxy gateway specifically and uh i think zest also saw that he was scouted because i think if you're actually gonna go for triple gates you don't go for a sentry sentry stalker is almost always if i'm not mistaken the macro choice i don't think you ever do sentry stalker opener with a aggressive choice it could be wrong and it could be just like super super mind games but the nexus tells me i'm right so i'm gonna say i'm right so it's funny because we do have 100 video minerals put into this that's not helping. And you actually don't even use... It's funny in PvP, if it goes into a regular PvP, like two gateways robo, you actually don't use your gateways that often. Like ideally anyways. Like you just, you go stalker sentry, two sentry maybe, two stalker maybe, then two sentry. Then just like robo. Just, just like pump out immortals because immortals are great. But anyways, it is a waste. It's a waste. So I'm actually kind of surprised that Zest didn't cancel it. But I guess he thought maybe if Trap didn't take it seriously, then he could use it to just warp into Depths. Which isn't wrong. He fakes out an Oracle. He did this last game too, but Trap is not fooled. I'm actually surprised Trap isn't fooled. Oh, he did see the Nexus. Okay, never mind. He saw it. Hello, hello. <clears throat> If 
virus is spread by tourists. Photo Kev, that's an awfully aggressive language, dude. Calm, calm down. Are you saying that all tourists are to be blamed? Even the tourists that didn't know they were in an area that was potentially infected? Even the tourists that came back home before everyone realized what was going on? That seems awfully close-minded. I don't know. I mean, is it true? Maybe it's true, but I'm not going to be super angry at the tourists either. I'm not just going to be like, this is why tourism is bad. This is why we just never should visit any countries ever. All right? These, these fuckers, okay? They just, they just don't even deserve to live. Like, put them back in their countries. Like, you're getting awfully close to uh, just being kind of a D-bag. <clears throat> so, yeah. If you could just take a step back from being a douchebag, that'd be great. Uh, so, Zest... I mean, despite the failure of a proxy gateway, really has taken this in stride. And this is just what's so screwy about PvP. He did have to take a counterattack seriously, though. So he has two shield batteries. And this counterattack, well, not a direct attack, is doing some damage here. The double sentry immortal drop. Ah, oh, yes. The classic move. Actually take some hull damage on the immortal. But Zest uh, has been producing probes kind of non-stop. He has a probe lead, despite the gateway, despite the two shield batteries. His upgrade is pretty much on time with traps. And traps only benefit here is that his army's a bit better. Because he has a war prism and a second immortal. Which, hey, that's actually very, very good. But he would have to actually use it, right? Ah, four gateways and resonant glaives on the way. So Zest ideally would have Archons against an Adept attack. Like, sentries are very good, shield batteries are great, but Archons, like, that's the real, like... That's the real kicker right there. But is he going to have enough and in time? Always a good question to ask. He's going to go ahead and get a Stargate to deal with the War Prism harassment, which I actually don't think is a bad idea. It's a, quite of expensive, right? Uh, an entire tech structure plus the Phoenix itself to take care of a War Prism. But if he doesn't, this War Prism actually has no reason to ever stop doing what it's doing. So it's going to grab a Stalker, it's going to grab a Pylon, it could one day grab a Forge, and that would be devastating. So, it's not the first time we've seen someone try and do this, but as I point it out, we see a Supply Block. <laughs> Way to go, Zest. It's also something that isn't going to help against the Adept all-in. And he's also not scouting. He's dealing with this pressure, he's trying to get a response to it, and he's not scouting, and he's still taking damage. Trying to get the plus two instead of uh, immediately going into Archons. And Trap's plan here is looking better and better as time goes on. You will quickly amass Adepts. You may not have much to begin with, but then I'll suddenly just like shoot right up there. Into the 60s and 70s of the army supply. And Zest is doing everything he should not be doing to combat this. Going for a Stargate. Going for a third Nexus. Still not getting that many Archons. Going for a second upgrade. This could be the second Archon. Not setting up in the natural where the shield batteries are. Lucid Phoenix does see the army and the army type, and I think Zesh should just go ahead and skedaddle away from this, but he's actually going to try and protect the third base. I don't know if that's actually the good call. That seems very dangerous. The Archon, however, is going to form. I guess he feels confident because he has Archons. Is that really how that works, though? The Adepts don't take uh, any chance to go across, like, past the army. They actually take the fight, but the Adepts deal well with the Zealot from the front line. The Archons... Not really getting the opportunity to do the most amount of damage possible. They actually didn't reach the Adepts that often. I'm going to rewind and take another look at that engagement in a second here. But this was a terrible start for Zest. If he's holed up in the natural, the Adepts kind of... I mean, they usually shit on top of your army anyways. But at least you have the shield batteries to try and help out. Third Archon is going to join the mix. But it's kind of being deep popped around and getting targeted down. A couple of force fields are helpful, slicing away the Adepts. So they're getting targeted by the Archons this time. But there are just so many units here for Trap. Good God. And all the Archons have been depleted. Shield batteries have been depleted. And this might just be it. GG. Ah, Zest. So confident. He's so confident there.
See, I wanted to slow this down. Because, like, Archons are great against Adepts because Adepts actually clump. Um, generally, their most threatening aspect is that they actually shade on top of you. Or they shade past you, but he actually kind of had, like, a wall against that. But they shade on top of you. But if they shade on top of, uh, like, Archons, like, they're the dumb ones at that point, right? But not only is this not a very big army comparatively, there's a 30 army supply difference. So that means he doesn't have as much units to throw away, like, to actually just provide fodder for the Archons. His Archons also aren't getting the best shots, right? Like, yeah, they're, like, they are attacking, but they're not getting super clumped up adepts. And sometimes it looks like they're only attacking, like, one or two units at a time, instead of, again, clumped up units. So it looks okay maybe in the beginning of this fight, but once the Zealots have all gone, then suddenly it's just, like, a mass amount of red and a not mass amount of blue. And you just gotta wonder what would have happened if Zest had, like, taken this super seriously and gone to the natural instead. Because, I mean, look what happens in the natural. <clears throat> Ideally, he has more force fields because he doesn't take that engagement on the right side. And force fields are very good against this. That one, like, little force field thing he did here. Yeah, it clumps up all the adepts. Look how easily they go down to the Archons. Boom, bop. Beep -beep -beep. That's the ideal situation there, but... He'd already lost so much. It was like a numbers game. GG. Overconfidence, methinks. You know, could have still been very close and maybe even Trap's game, even if he did defend in the natural, but... I think he should defend in the natural. I think he should have. <clears throat> <clears throat> Kiev, I'm starting to think that my ban on you was actually well deserved. I mean, it was my bad, because I think you just made a mistake after trying to fix your mistake on the whole calling me my real name thing. But now you just have a real, you just have a real bad take on things. So yeah, just 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 simmer down. Just drop the subject. Anywho, game number three, Nightshade. The winner of this was gonna go on to a move uh, to face. Uh, I think I have it. I think I have it. They were gonna go on to face Creator in the last week's Alima League. So this was the semifinals, and whoever wins goes on to face creator in the finals which would be another pvp the bottom right as the pink protoss it is zest top left yellow protoss trap really bold colors here and we're on nightshade so this would be zest's map choice zest had a failed proxy gateway but really adapted fine from it in my opinion he was up in probes he was down immortal but he wasn't taking direct damage. He took some damage from a Warprism drop, but not a whole lot. And his like economy really looked fine. And his army type really looked okay, too. Like, that early blip of that gateway didn't seem to really affect the game as a whole. So I, I don't... <clears throat> I don't want to blame that. I'm, just, I'm, again, going to blame his positioning of his army. But it might deter him from doing it again. <clears throat> since Trap was so uh, so quick to find that gateway. It was like the fourth sp space he scouted. Nightshade's a very large map. There's a lot of positions to put a proxy pile on, but a lot of them have kind of been figured out. Trap putting his in a very common location for the fake proxy, then checking the position of a very common proxy. Actually, this could be his proxy to his opponent, but yeah. <clears throat> Zess also wants to keep tabs because he actually hasn't done a probe scout into the main and this is something that zest and some other protoss but i feel like i especially see this with zest do is that they'll just go ahead and have an opener that can scout and deal with a type of of proxy and just won't bother scouting scouting like the actual main of your opponent even though it's literally free in pvp you just send a probe and it comes back but uh 
Yeah, so he just goes around scouting. And in a weird way, your lack of information is better information, because sometimes they're, they're tricking you with whatever you do scout. But he does waste time looking around the map for pylons. There's no dangerous pylons, so he figures he's safe. And there certainly aren't any dangerous pylons. <clears throat> and is now going to try and push in. Trap has to keep in mind this could be like a proxy pylon down here that he missed, and there's going to be more stalkers, but there's not. Zest went for a third Nexus. He's going for a Robo. He wants to take some type of trade here, and he does get one stalker and keeps all of his stalkers alive, actually, so they're not too shabby at all. Going to get a cancel on the shield battery, maybe? Because he didn't actually go for the better units, technically. If he had four stalkers and nothing else to show for it, and he's killed two stalkers and a canceled shield battery, but if he had nothing to show for it, if this was instantly slapped down, it's kind of a regretful opener, I suppose. Stalkers get more useless as the game goes on, typically, although we did see a lot of blink games at Katowice. And yet it seems to have fallen off. It was like this weird, just like, worlds that we lived in for a week where people were just like, blink, 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 blink. And then now it's like, no, no, we don't want to do that. What? I don't understand this matchup. Should better even cancel? It didn't. Wow, good eyes, Gimbal. So that was like a super effective four soccer poke. Yeah, that's a, that's a very effective for Stalkers. And they all survive, too. That's actually pretty insane. Good micro there from Zest, but not the end of the world there for Trap. Zest goes for a very fast forge here. So definitely going to have the uh, lead on the upgrade. If his opponent wasn't going for a forge, maybe he regrets that. But he is going for a forge, and Zest scouted that. Like, just now? <clears throat> very. Not long ago. Not long ago. Double Scout even coming out right now. <clears throat> Zest is getting all types of scouting done. Yeah, he's going to have a faster plus one. Also going into that uh, Warp Prism first build again. Like it did in the first game. He ended up using this for four Adepts, which were able to get three Sentries. Plus the two Adepts he got earlier got a fourth Sentry. So actually in that first game, Zest was a Sentry killing machine. And now he's just a sentry using machine. Just using these sentries. Every Hallucinant Phoenix possible. I mean, the first one, the first two, the first three, like, they're all scouting good things. The forge coming down. Is it a robo? Is it anything else that's tricky? Like a surprise robotics bay? Are you taking your gases, right? Is it, is it resonant enclaves? Are you moving out? Like, all things very important to check with Hallucinant Phoenix, but the, uh... Fourth, fifth, sixth ones are like... Maybe they're just checking now to see, again, if there's a move out. Always important to check. But also if his Warp Prism can do anything. Which Trap seems to figure out. Wow. If I didn't know any better, I'd say map hacks. <laughs> this was perfectly... Perfectly scouted. Like, good god. Did he see that with... He saw that with a Phoenix and I missed it? What happened? He just knew it was there. How did he know? I mean, maybe he was just looking for a pylon. I return to serve. But oh my god. It certainly is a common warping spot. It's the edge before you get into dead space to the natural, but like... Oh, that is such confidence. His Hallucinant Phoenix did scout that the army wasn't moving out, that the third base was on the way, so I guess he felt it was safe to move his entire army. That's the other thing that's very confident, is moving your entire army. Well, not the Immortals, <clears throat> but most of your army to a location. But he did have scouting, and he was absolutely correct. That War Prism is going to go for some Archon harassment. And he has denied it for at least a minute, if Zest even wants to try and do it from here on out with the weakened War Prism. That's good stuff there from Trap. Who also has his third Nexus on the way, and has started his plus two as fast as he could have, I guess. Both are going to be putting Chrono into this. As we head into the plus two attack phase of PvP. 
You just, uh, someone has to attack when plus two is, is about to finish. And it's all about that positioning. So this is his gateways finished, chronoing that plus two, looking to deal with his opponent's warp prism now that he's seen it. Archon on Archon on Archon on Archon. Oh, it's actually Immortals here from Trap, which unfortunately lose the war against the Archon drop because they can't shoot up. They can't threaten the Warp Prism. Oh, my middle mouse button is still being broken. It's so tilting. Ugh. <clears throat> toss for Toss is a boring matchup. I don't think it's boring. I think it's fascinating with nothing happening on the, str on the screen. That's actually kind of my whole perception of Protoss for a long time, is that a lot of the cool things that Protoss does doesn't really... It doesn't often reflect to something that looks cool. I, I've talked to quite a bit about this, but because nothing's happening, I'm gonna do it again. So, suck it, guys. But yeah, Protoss just, they always seem to get hate because whenever they do something that's very... Uh, conclusive, like ending a game, it doesn't seem that impressive. And then when they do something impressive, even in a macro sense, people seem to disregard it because it just doesn't look like a whole lot. But if you actually, like, know a decent amount and you talk about all the things that could be happening and what they're reacting to and what they're thinking of, then it's a very interesting matchup. And honestly, it's a little bit confusing. But this isn't confusing. This is just a direct battle to battle. Two Lucid! What? I don't know what that was supposed to be, but that might not have been intentional. Or maybe he noticed a lack of Observer and thought they would take on some of the army, but it didn't really work out, did it? Trap takes a commanding lead as he takes the Concave, I think is mostly what happened there. But hold on here, Archon's still surviving, Zest doing some juggling, his own War Prism starting to reinforce. He did have the plus two advantage for quite some time, but that is gone now, and he does fall down in that supply. Trap takes the better positioning right there <clears throat> to absolutely slaughter Zest's army. Is it enough to actually end the game right then and there? I'm not so sure. <clears throat> but the War Prism would have to stay by... Oh, it had to stay alive. And it also would have had to have done a little bit more, is what I was trying to say. But, yeah, it died. So, yeah, that's, that's bad. But yeah, this army fight was just super awkward here. Um, Trap sees an opportunity and Zest... I don't even know what he was thinking going... I guess he was thinking, like... Oh, I'll make a bigger concave by moving my army over here and then warping in over here. But he had already actually used his warpins. There are no more warpins to even get a concave on. And by having his army just like literally all move, like penguins following each other to the riots, the zealots were all clumped up. He could have had his own decent concave if he had just kind of spread right here right now, but he doesn't. Maybe he thought he could escape and decides, okay, fuck it, like I have plus two, you know, victory there, but. He has two Archons bearing down on his Zealots. And they're also being juggled too, so they actually stay alive for most of this fight. And then his own Zealots <coughs> are unable to help on the left side. <clears throat> against the Zealots a trap. And then yeah, Hussein Colossus. Uh, I can't explain that. <laughs> Hallucinations do soak damage. Like, you you can literally see them make the hallucination and know yourself that it's hallucinated, but if you don't have an observer, your army will still shoot it. It's just that hallucinations don't... <clears throat> they don't last very long anyways. They literally got one shot. So I'm not sure what it was. Time for a new mouse on stream gifts. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. And then these Immortals also, I think because, again, the Zealots were all clumped up over here. These Zealots never actually got touched. They got touched a little bit towards the end, but they, uh, they're they supposed to be kind of almost taken out of the equation of the fight if Zealots get on top of them, but they were just free-firing the entire time. Very awkward engagement from Zest. Not usually something you say about Zest. He usually always makes the right call in PvP, whether it's strategic or macro, micro, or... Yeah, taking good engagements, but in that game, he took a bad one. And it was Trap who moved on to face Creator.